always tricky to start. So, uh, hi, I'm Mike Promoter. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Not all the blogs are me sitting at home having a conversation with you like this. So, uh, as COVID-19, we're in currently week four at the minute. We haven't really been working for the last four weeks. We are still operating from home. Still doing a lot of mail orders, so thank you very much to all the people that have supported us and continue to do so. You know, purchasing products from us, uh, stock is good on most things at the minute. Uh, spring spaces, intakes, power filters. Anyway, there'll be a link somewhere around here. I don't know how Jay will do it to um, the web shop. We hope this all over is. is hope, I'll start that again. We hope this is going to be over pretty quickly. Um, although no, no dates, nobody knows. So we can get back and making more exciting content and rather than like I say, me sitting in front of a laptop. So I do wish that uh, everyone out there is all happy and healthy. Uh, staff wise are all good, they're all furloughed, so they're all at home. So Bonnie's still on email, she's still doing all the mail order, Jay's still working remotely, um, Nick's building race cars at a guest, and I'm not sure what Courtney's doing, I need to give her a call, I'll make sure she's all right. Um, so what we did is on social media is we Ask questions, you know, please just drop us an email in uh, with thoughts on the business, uh, how we're doing things, things going forward, ask us about projects, cars, ask us about 135i, whatever it be. So we've got a number of different questions to go through on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So I'll go through a few of them now. Um, the ones we're going to go through, first of all, are from Instagram. So bear with me because obviously I've got them on the screen in front of me as well at the same time. So if this is a bit of a boring video for you, we're sorry, but uh, this is what we can really do at the minute. Um, fingers crossed, it will get better um, and, and better quicker. Right, so first questions are from Instagram. Let me just open these up, yeah, quite a few. So I'm not gonna be reading them all out, but we'll just go through most of them. So the first question we had come through when we posted it up was <laughs> from j.bass. Why is j.bass the best? Well, Jay is the videographer and editor for Motex, so I'll now switch across to him and uh, he'll explain to you why he thinks he's the best and obviously his links for his own Instagram and YouTube stuff is on there. Um, we think he's good, that's why I gave him the job, but over to you, Jay. Hi guys, so for those of you who haven't seen me before, I am Jay Bass, I'm the content creator of Motex Performance. So all the pictures, all the videos, um, all the product photos and stuff like that, so that is what I do at Motec. So I hope you're all staying safe in this lockdown. Um, obviously it's not the best to be filming and taking pictures, but we're trying to give you as much content as we can still, um, obviously just from home. And uh, yeah, so why is Jay Bass the best? Um, I'm not gonna answer that question because Mike's threw me under the bus on that one. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll uh, put my Instagram down below. So if you wanna check out some of my other work, it's j.bass and then on YouTube as well, I'll put my link just here, and you can go check out my other vlogs and other car videos and stuff like that as well. So, back to Mike for the questions. So, after Jay's little uh, speak about himself, you can see why I gave him the job. He is good at what he does, but I don't tell him nearly enough. So, what we're gonna now do is go through Instagram questions. Um, we get some good questions. Um, if you ever do send us a message on Instagram, give us as much information as you can on the car. For instance, don't just tell me you've got an F20 BMW, we need some more information. Anyway, back to the questions. We get asked a lot about the M135i, which is good. Uh, being a new product, new car, new content for us, it, it does work quite well. So we'll go through some of the questions. Um, the first one is, is will they be able to add the pops and bangs and the crackles back in the newer M135i's? What he means by that in late 19, so ours was an October 19 car, um, they still had an overrun burble um, on idle, you could put it up and it would pop and bang. Uh, later cars, some sort of January onwards, uh, WLTP emissions, I'm going to guess somewhere down the line. BMW changed the software so they don't overrun verbal. You will be able to do this once you can basically physically tune via the ECU, via the diagnostic, via, tune the ECU via the diagnostic port. At the minute it is an ECU out job, so getting a brand new car, putting up and up an ECU, just to add overrun verbal is a bit of a tune. There's not so many people doing it at the minute. It is available. Um, I would always wait and see how it comes across. Just bear in mind that it will only be very light if you have too much fuel in the exhaust, it can upset the GPF filter. Uh, again, some people will later on down the line be taken out, but give it time, it will come back and the software will help. If the car already overrun burbles, adding a beams exhaust is only gonna enhance that. So if it doesn't do it now, putting an exhaust onto it won't make it. 
It's um, the exhaust can only unmuffle what is already in there. Uh, next question, do we sell the black grills for the M135i? No, it's a BMW part. Pretty much in every comment we get about that car, we always say it's a BMW part. Um, eBay or the dealer, it's bumper off to fit them as well, so good luck, it's not a fun job. Um, what demo car you think of next for the M135i and what mods are coming also? So, uh, mods on the M135i are Bilstein dampers, uh, potentially a tuning box from Remus, um, intake system with Piper Gross and Forge, and then the next thing with the 135 was to do some track time, was to get it out, we were meant to get it out on the 6th of April with the straight six, uh, Tony Lewis um, has a bit of involvement in that to take it there and get some quick lap times really, it's a nice little track of land down, I've been running, almost got that wrong, uh, but the main king of the been running, uh, which should be uh, quite a quick little car. Uh, how many Motec edition and 135 are you plan to make? That's a really good question. As many as we can sell, really. Um, we did 59 of the previous M140s, including some of the last ones from the Anamai. So there was 12 of those, and then obviously 47 of the other ones done. Um, we'd like to do more. We have a longer cycle. So the 135i is, we got it from day one, where the 140, we were only going from the Shadow Edition, so we used the pre Shadow Editions, to basically make a one, a Motec Edition to sell via Tony. We can replicate any of them on, on, you know, if you've got a used car, same again with the 135i. If you buy a car from a dealer, you can still bring it to us so we can make it look identical. You just can't plaque them in numbers for obvious reasons, that's a totally thing. thing. Um, how does modifying any new car and also your M135i affect PCB deals? Good question. Again, we get asked this one a lot as well. PCB deals, basically, it's not your car, as you know, it is you're renting it from BMW. Um, always get in contact with them. Sometimes they are okay with it. Um, modifications fall under the same thing as if you fit in a tow bar or reverted camera and that sort of stuff. Don't be silly with modifications. Always keep your standard stuff, put it back to standard if you ever need to. If it's going back to the dealer, you're giving it back, take the parts off. Um, when we were going for our 135i, BMW did send me an email, I don't know who we were asking, what we were doing, we explained the situation, and they still sold us a car. Um, have a conversation with them, it's their car at the end of the day. Um, just explain it as best you can. Small modifications, and you wouldn't put it back to standard, but it's, it's done for them. Most seem okay though. Um, are we planning to do any two series Grand Coupe Motic Edition? I, I'd like to think so. Uh, the problem is with the UK, it's not really a car that's going to be particularly popular. Like the 240 in the UK was never particularly popular, so compared to the 140. Um, so fingers crossed if they sell or they get some good deals come through from BMW, then yeah, potentially I'd like to see them. I quite like them. I'd like a black one with red leather, but. Um, maybe next time. All right, next load of questions. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this page, eight people just sort of saying hi, motive fans. Uh, love your work. Hello, hello, hello. Hi to everybody. Um, someone here, uh, GTI underscore polo underscore six C, uh, favorite cars for all star and which you own. We'll give you a long time on that one. Um, Jay likes some strange stuff. Courtney. Doesn't really care about cars. Bonnie being Mini GP2. Me, don't really know. I'm really lucky I get to drive all types of cars that come to work. Um, Porsche 911 Turbo, the brand new 992. What a car. Um, or new RS6, but a bit too expensive. Um, and Nick, anything that's old, manual, big power, rear wheel drive. Uh, someone's asked here for cost of an M4 Remus exhaust. I've sent you a link, so I hope you should have that. Um, any chance of uh, producing more products for the B9 Audi A4? Um, we'd love to put more stuff into production, our own stuff, but unfortunately for us, it's not a popular car. We, you know, we are 95% BMW. Um, we have a BMW audience, so we'll always do the BMW sort of stuff. There will be more of a following for that car in the state, so yet again, stuff will trickle across, so you start to see Forge doing more parts, pop across, give like Maxim Designs, but give it a good chance, it's still a relatively new car, and unfortunately, they're always going to go for what's popular, so people are always going to do the S4s, the RS5s, the S3s, the RS3s first because it's more of a tuner's market, so they're going to sell more parts. And it's a business, they've got to sell more parts. Uh, Rockman Pop, Peter Vass is a really good customer of ours. He's done two M2s, a white one and a black one. He's now got an X340i. And he's asked a good question here. He says, um, can you please design your own exhaust for the X3, excuse me, M40i because no one else will? So they don't want to, it's because they can't do it correctly or make it look correct. Um, the, with that sort of car, the problem is, is that the tailpipes from Remus are 100 mil, so they're four inch tailpipes. 
Now, when you're doing a 540i, for example, you fit the 100 mil tailpipes, you have to put a deeper valance on in place to get the tailpipe in place, otherwise it would sit too low. So you have to use the one off the 550i. So when you buy the Remus one, it gives you a part number to buy from BMW by this. There isn't a bigger valance from BMW on the X3 and the X440i. So if you had 100 mil tailpipes, they would just sit down too low, which means you would see the box hanging down in the bracket tray. It wouldn't work. If they put the smaller ones in place, the 89 mil ones, what they would fit on like a Audi S3, for example, they would look too small and your factory one would look better. So they are working on it, but that's all I really know at the minute, unfortunately. Um, what other questions we've got going on here? Um, we have modifying PCPs, lots of modifications here going on. Okay, so we spoke about that. Um, hi there, can you please give me a follow? Can do. Uh, RS Chris, you know what you see next? Yeah, we see a blue M135, I don't know. What's the next Mosaic project car? Good question. Um, I'm still in the X3 at the minute. The plan was to come out the X3 as soon as the sort of season started, if you like. Um, can't tell you what I'm gonna go into, because um, we probably still will. But it will be something for the business and for the channel. Uh, to try and grow that as well and it will be a bit of as well so most you can probably guess but that's the next plan for the next project i'm still keeping the 135i as well um <laughs> good question here from bradley Plummer. why do you like that why do you love should i say the m135i so much and it looks just too much like an a-class don't say i've ever loved it it's a really good little car um and that's all i don't think i really love any cars really that's just me um they are good everyday cars. You know, they perform well, they just all good all round cars, like most cars are now. The reason why the old cars start to look the same, now I'm no designer, but headlamps and grills and stuff have to kind of still be in the same place. I've got the headlamps have to be in the same sort of boxy area in the front of the car, otherwise they don't pass particular regulations, you know, if it's impact pedestrian zones or lights or whatever it may be. So they start to look all very sort of similar. Um, but the 885 isn't a bad looking car, so. It's not really a problem. The 135i has better angles than others, but I think most cars do, really. Uh, how much are we looking at for lowering my F40 on 135i? Depends if you've got spaces or not. Um, drop us an email. In fact, I'll drop you a DM with a costing onto that one. Um, this is a good question, so I won't say the name. We get this all the time. People will just reply back, no OPF exhaust. I need a bit more information. We'll get customers sending. We we'll probably get on different types of social media, anywhere between 20 and 25 inquiries a day on Instagram, for example, and just saying no OPF exhaust doesn't really help me out. I assume you mean for the 135i, um, yet again, because you can't tune them safely without putting the ECU apart, and also it's BMW's car, so I'm not going to be putting the ECU apart and then taking out the DP, uh, OPF. But if you're going to send us a message, please, as much information as you can do. The more information you give us, the better the quote will be, the more information we can give you as well. Otherwise, we end up having six or seven conversations across, so don't just send to me BMW OPF exhaust work this is obviously something a bit new for us a bit of a different thing to try so if there's something you like me having a one-to-one or one to my phone because the cameras are jays anyway um let me know we will try and do something a bit different like this every now and then while we're in covid19 it's very tricky for us to film uh during working hours you know there is only a short staff and we are busy a lot of the time so to have time to be able to have a conversation and in-depth vlogs which i'll go into another question in a minute is always tricky but any questions you want me to answer whether it's about the business how we got started dealing with the youtubers instagram whatever it may be just ask below and i'll do my best to come back to you so we've done obviously questions on um instagram so we'll go now to facebook and youtube so we'll start off with i think these ones are from facebook so we'll just go to there so this is a really good question actually from Alex Brymer. What would you make uh, of driving an M-Lite car every day rather than a full fat M car in my opinion? I had both, I had the M2, you can call it a full fat M car, um, and the 135i at the same time. And being honest, the 135i was a better daily. So to give you an example, uh, the M2 was brilliant. I loved it to bits. It was very good at being quite quick and quite snappy on the throttle which is great, but in traffic, and obviously when I was moving to this new build as Roadworks, the car was horrendous. You just touch the brakes and it would snap. You touch the throttle and it would just yet again snap back. Now that really started to grate on me. It also has no crawler gear, which is all great. And it makes the car feel like it's on edge and it feels very a lot more sort of special. 
But as a daily car commuting at half past seven in the cold and wet October, it, it did bore me a little bit, but that's me personally. I've had my E92 M3 V8. Um, that was an amazing car, you know, it was really, really great. Not particularly quick, sounded amazing. But as dailies, they do some things very good, but I think the M lights, 140s, 440Rs, if I'm not going to like, the M135 like, is a better daily. They're just not as aggressive, but I am 39 and that's the sort of stuff I prefer. I prefer something just to be a bit more quieter. In the real world, I'd have an M135 light and an M3 or an M2 compact, whatever it is for a weekend car, and then you've got the best of both. But M lights are probably designed to do more miles and to be more of a usable daily than a full fat M car. But, that's just me, my personal opinion, so I think what do you want. Um, Chris Moss sent an interesting one asking about, why don't we go into a bit more in depth about some of the bigger products we can sell, like bigger brakes, Tarek's four pot pistons, Bill Stein coilovers. It's a good question, probably because we don't fit a lot of it. Um, you can only really sort of do a video or a vlog on about the products that you sell and your customers that appeal to you. And we don't have a lot of customers that buy out and out track day cars. We have customers that do track, track day should I say, but happy just to change discs and pads, maybe certain lines onto it. You know, the customer's gonna go out and spend big known on APs and that sort of stuff. They generally don't come to us. It's not that we can't supply parts to them, they just generally don't come to us. And yet again, as I said earlier on in another part of this vlog, is it's very difficult for us to film. The cars we've got coming in all the time are customs cars. So we get them in, we have a conversation with them, do the job, and of course they're excited. They don't want us talking for another half an hour, 40 minutes about how their parts are fitted and set up, whatever else, when they just want to get in their car and drive it. And of course, we, as that customer's ready to go, we've got another one coming in. It's something we'd like to do more of, but it's a working business, so it's really tricky for us to do. We are doing more in-depth things. There's another good video about when we went to EBC factory and explained about the big brakes, um, the new two-piece floating rotors, the, the quality of the pads, the, the track pad. There is always that we do try, and also we have had conversations where we've had the guys from IBAC Technical come across and have conversations about spring rates and that sort of stuff. So we are trying, but it's really difficult to film that in a busy day where the phone is ringing constantly. We have four or five cars, cars in a day, taking pictures, vlogs, whatever it may be. It's, it's all tricky, but they're all noted. And if we have more time and cars in longer, then I would love to. Um, the reason why we use YouTube is not to, we don't have any of the real money, don't make any money from YouTube. I think all the videos we've ever played over the last four years, I think I could have earned $80, which doesn't mean anything at all. It's just giving confidence so people know where to be able to buy stuff, who they're talking to, and see before and afters. Somebody also wrote, so that's the ones from Facebook, one of the ones that are not repeated anyway. Somebody put on um, YouTube, why are the videos so short? And the good question is with that is, the reason why they're so short is because we use the same video for Instagram. You have to have a 60 second time on Instagram. So we do the longer vlog videos when we're talking, or we do a compilation, but generally if it's just like I know, a Golf GTI for an exhaust springs and spaces, it only really warrants a 60 second video because we can only share that on Instagram. So there's no point doing a three minute video. I can only share on one platform, so it's the same platform carried across. Um, we'd like to do longer, but yet again, same comes to We don't have the cars for that long. So when a customer comes in, he doesn't then want to wait another hour and a half after we go and do some film as we drive by. He wants to get his new car and hear the exhaust and go home or he's whatever it may be. So it is timing, unfortunately. Um, can we, what have we got here? A video guidance on maybe lowering springs and spaces for beginners and make pros and cons. That's a good idea. We can definitely do that with, you know, having a bit of a pro and con and talking about the different um, spring elements. We did it with the 140, but why, you know, we use IBAX. Why we use IBAX other than other people's. We can definitely do that to a vlog. As for fitting, um, it's not something I'd ever want to do, encourage people to, to fit on the driver unless they're competent mechanics. It's not what our YouTube channel is about, it's being able to fit an exhaust or a set of springs or something like that. If we did something, if you did something wrong and you watch one of our videos, I'm not interested in it. Spaces, definitely, that's something we could do. We do a lot of man order on spaces, so that's something we could do, just going through torque settings, make sure we've got the correct length bolts. Um, and obviously how to clean the hub up and that sort of stuff. That's a good one, so we're looking to doing that one as well. Uh, what else has he got here? What kind of modifications do you do for an E90 320D? Um, not a lot, really. Springs and spaces, a bit of body styling on that one. Um, it's just one of those cars where it was always governed by what was popular. So E92 is 335i um, and the M3. You know, in fact, the M3 is not a lot of stuff out there because it wasn't particularly tunable. We get asked a lot, 
uh, on here as well, especially on social media. It says like, hi, what can you do for my car? We do need as much information as you can. The more information you give us, the better. So obviously this customer here has put E93, 320D, ID exhaust, spring space expensive. He knows exactly what he's after. <clears throat> and I can go back and obviously give a quote and obviously what we can do. So the more information you give us, the better. Uh, what we've got here, uh, any chance you guys doing an M240 RV or B1 carbon air box um, with a quicksilver exhaust? Uh, quicksilver exhaust we do, we're trying to do more of. Um, I get on really well with Ollie, I get really well with James from Venus as well. Um, so yes, we'd like to do more of that. The carbon air boxes are really good. Uh, the carbon air boxes by Armour um, and pipe across filters are really, really good. Unfortunately, in the UK, they're just a chunk of money. Um, I had one on the M2. We've done a couple of videos of 140s um, and I think 440i with the air box on as well. So it sounds similar to that. So yeah, again, I've got your information here. I'll send you a link to those ones. So you'll we'll have that there as well. Um, can you buy a new Motec Edition M135i and then bring it straight to yourself for modifications? Um, yeah, you can. The only thing I can't do is the numbers. Uh, that's just for Tony. That's just to help him, obviously. Keep an eye on the number of cars and what cars he's sold. All the parts are just anything else that's off the shelf from us. It was the same on the 140s as well. It was just the plaques and the stickers we couldn't do anything with. It was just a, a nice thing so that Tony could obviously offer that particular car. So it will look identical, but it won't be a Motec Edition car. That's just... Uh, an agreement we have with Tony from BMW, which is only fair, but everything else, spring space is maximum, no problem at all. Any future plans for the F54 Mini Club and parts? Um, yeah, so the Venus exhaust we've already done, we've actually got two booked in for springs and spaces, but COVID-19 has just held us right up on those, so there'll be a lot more coming from the club, and as you know, it's the same car as the 135i, so it's a no-brainer to sort of obviously a whole range of products for that one as well, so keen to do some more of those. Um, someone's put here, sound of Remus exhaust, all the different vehicles you've fitted in one video. That would be a lot. It would probably be a good hour long video. Instead of doing it like that way, we're going to actually do it as playlists. So if you look on our channel, you'll see Cars and Coffee, which is just talking with um, a specialist, if you like, from Supply, so Ibac or McGuire's or EBC, whatever it may be. Um, and then obviously you'll see on the playlist, it'll just say Motec and it'll just show you stacks of all the cars on there. Um, if we have more time due to COVID-19, maybe go through it all, put it into Audi, BMW, Mercedes. It'd be pretty cool to do that, press quite a bit of work. And then um, also the playlist you see just for the M135i. When we get the second demo car, or whatever car, whatever it may be, we'll have a separate playlist onto that one as well. So I think that's all about all the spring, uh, all the questions. Most of them kind of relapsed over and were sort of very similar things. Um, so yeah, again, I just wanted to sort of stress the fact this is something a bit different for us. Um, I don't know how it's going to come out because I'm filming it on my phone. So if the quality is not the best, we're sorry. Uh, if it's blurry, sorry again. But please stay safe. We're all good. Um, keep supporting us as much as you can. It really helps if you're just buying a key ring or an air freshener or one set of springs. It really does help us go through this difficult time. Um, and uh, let's all stay home like we should be doing and um, we'll have some fun once all this is over. So yeah, again, any questions, if you like this sort of format, please let us know. Any thumbs up really does help. It helps us obviously just spur us on to carry on doing this and um, stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, cheers.